Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. Today we are looking at gesture controlled presentation. So here you can see with my gestures, I can control a presentation. I can go back and forward and I can also have a pointer. So here you can see this is a pointer. I can move around and not only that, I can also draw using this pointer. So if I just use one finger, I can draw, for example, I'm talking about the basics and then I'm talking about the deep learning and then oops, I made a mistake. So what I can do, I can use my three fingers to actually delete uh, my previous command. So here I can remove all of these. And if I go to the next slide, you will see it is automatically deleted. So whatever a drawing you did, it does not shift to the next slide. So I can move on to the next slides. And let's say these are the learning outcomes. I can delete and then I can show the pointer and then I can draw a line for example and all of these things uh, they do not affect if you are using your hands normally so you can see here i'm using my hands normally i'm moving around and nothing happens on the screen so this is perfect for actually giving real presentations so you can use this out of the box and give your own presentation like this and not only that i will also show you how to create a good presentation uh, using an online tool which is free and that's how i created this so i can go back and forth and all these files, uh, they are also available on our website to download, but you can create your own files as well. So this is a very exciting project, so stay tuned. This video is sponsored by ClearML. Do you want to know how machine learning and computer vision are done in the industry? Well, we all love running experiments and notebooks to learn really fast. But when solving problems in the real world, things tend to get really complicated, but that just means there's more to learn. ClearML, an open source toolbox, will help you bridge the gap between learning and actually deploying your projects in a way that's scalable to thousands of users. If you love machine learning and are looking to make real impact with your skills, you can get started for free in 10 minutes. Check out ClearML and let them help you take your projects to the next level. If you would like to level up your computer vision skills, do check out our premium courses that are available on our CVZone platform. Links are in the description. So without further ado, let's get started. So the first thing we'll do is to start off by creating our presentation. So it's very easy to do that. You can head on to canva.com and this is a free tool that you can use. Of course, there is a paid version as well. Uh, but here you will find lots of free templates that you can use and uh, you can add your text and animations and all that and uh, That will be quite useful. So what you can do is you can write here education presentation and Then these are the templates that you can see. So here you can see final report uh, Natural hazards geography whatever you want you can select. So again, there are pro versions and they are free so let's Pick a free version so that everyone can use so for example here we have reading a map this one seems free and it seems good so let's click on that and it will open it up in a new window we will resize this to this is right now it's full HD so it's 920 by 1080 what we will do is we will change it to 1280 by 720 pixels so we will resize this so that we can export it in this format. Now, normally if you're presenting, uh, you probably would want a full screen. So you can go ahead with 1080p as well. So full HD resolution. So here you can see we have all these different designs and uh, it looks quite good. So what we can do is if we wanted to change, we can change things over here. For example, um, we can say uh, exploring AI let's say and let's just remove a grade 5 uh, let's just say artificial intelligence so exploring AI and then we will go on to the next slide uh, these are the lesson outline so the map and its parts let's say we will first start with the basics and then we will move on to, let's say, machine learning. 
and then we will move on to uh, deep learning and then we will go ahead and uh, implement so we will write here implementation so we can resize this so that it fits maybe a little bit smaller there you go okay so I believe you get the idea you can play around with this and you can create your own presentation most of the things they're already available and all you have to do is you have to change these images and text uh, based on your requirement you can go to elements and for example here I can write artificial intelligence what is the problem artificial intelligence and here you go you have these images so again you can use the free ones if you are not using the paid version so for example uh, or let's pick something that is similar to this maybe this yeah I think this is a good replacement so if we remove this image and we just paste this one here and send this to the back uh, yeah maybe not that back position no, position for this send backward send backward there you go so maybe we can do something like that and then we can change the text over here and all that then again you can play around with all these uh, what do you call files and you can create your presentation I think there's a lot of them over here uh, what we can do is we can remove a few of them so we will try to keep it simple yeah, we will keep, let's say, uh, how many pages are there? Let's say we'll keep five pages. So this is thank you and we don't need the resources pages. So here we have these five pages and we are going to use this. Now, one important thing here is that these pages should have numbers. So this is one, two, three, four, five. So we need to make sure they have these numbers so that when you download them, they are already sorted so we don't have to sort them okay so let's download this and we will download it in PNG formats PNG will be a little bit clearer than JPG so it's better to download it PNG and yeah so we can simply hit download and it will download a zip file and from this zip file we will have all these five images so let's open that up there you go so we have these five images but here you can see the numbering is not there so that's not good so let's just go back here and we will change the name to one two three four and five so let's download that again There you go. So now we have uh, all the images in the correct order. So we can take this to our uh, PyCharm project. So let's go ahead and do that. <laughs> so the first thing we will do is to add all the files. So the presentation files. So we are going to open the explorer and here uh, right besides our main.py we are going to add all these images the ones that we downloaded but before that we will create uh, a new folder we will call it presentation no spelling wrong presentation okay so we are going to drag so simply dragging and dropping so we will drag and drop Something is wrong, it's not selecting all of them. I don't know, something is wrong here, but let's just drag one by one. Uh, or we can extract, but these are just five images, so not a big deal. So we have these images now, let's just zoom in and see if they are there. There you go, and they are in sequence. So that's good. So 
Now we will close this and we will go to our main file. Now the first thing we have to do after we add our presentation files, we are going to go to settings and then we are going to install the packages that we require. So we'll go to project, Python interpreter, and we are going to add the interpreter. Uh, actually, it's already there. If it's not there, uh, then you can click on add and then you can add it from here. So here we will click on add and then we will write CV zone. We are going to install that. And what else do we need? We need media pipe because we are using the hand detection media pipe. And when you install CV zone, it will also install OpenCV and it will also install NumPy. So we will be using those, but we don't have to install them separately because they come uh, with defaults uh, with CV zone. Okay. So now it is installing, so we are going to wait for it to complete installing. So one of the packages was installed, the other one gave an error. Let's see what that is. Uh, it is of media pipe. I'm not sure why that is. Let's just close that. Go to file, settings, add media pipe, and we will install it again. Okay, there you go. So now it is installed. So let's just close that. And now what we will do is we will first of all import our packages. So we will start off by opening our webcam so that we know everything is running smoothly. And from there onwards, we are going to add our presentation files. Then we will look into the hand detection. Then we will look into the drawing and the gestures and all that. So let's start with the webcam. So we will import CV2. And then what do we need? Yeah, that's pretty much it. And then we are going to create our camera object. So let's just write here, camera setup. And here we are going to write cap equals CV2, CV2 dot video capture. And we will give in the ID number, which is zero. Then uh, we need to give in the width and the height. So let's write here cap dot set and number th ID number three is the width. So let's write here width and the cap dot set ID number four is the height. So we didn't define width and height. So let's define them here. Variables and we will call them width and the height equals one two eight zero by 720. So we are going to use these later on as well. That's why we are putting in uh, putting them in variables so we can use them later on as well. So once that is done, uh, what happened there? Once that is done, we are going to write the while loop. So while true, we are going to check the success and the image equals cap dot read. So we are going to read from um, our uh, object in the cap. And then we are going to write cv2 dot im show. We want to show the image. So we will write here image. And what do we want to show? We want to show img. And then we have to write cv2 dot wait key and we will give it a delay of one milliseconds. Now we do want to quit it using the Q button. So we will put this in key and we will check if the key, if the key equals ORD Q, then we are going to write break. So it will break from the while loop if we press the Q button. So this will allow us to close it without pressing the cross button. Uh, actually, if you press the cross button, it's not going to, it's not going to close because every frame it will keep, uh, every iteration it will keep changing the frame. So right now I'm turning on the webcam and as you can see, the webcam is turned on and you can see me around. There you go and we have everything ready. So uh, again, it's up to you. If you want bigger size, you can have it here. So this size, uh, it doesn't have to be exactly the same as the presentation. So your, your webcam can be of different dimensions and your presentation can be of different dimensions. It doesn't matter what, uh, if, if they are same. Okay, so uh, this is for importing the images. So import images. So what do we mean by images? 
we are going to import the uh, presentation images as well over here. That's why we are writing importing images. So here, what we will do is, first of all, we need to know uh, all the names of these files. So whatever we have, we have to import. So normally, what you would do is you would you would um, put all of these in a list, and then you can just change their numbers when a gesture is being made. But the problem there is that if you draw something, it will remain on it. So we don't want that. We want to keep, uh, what do you call, iterating these images. We want to import on every iteration so that every time it's a new image. And if we want, we can draw on it. So it might be a little bit confusing at this point, but I will explain this further on as well. So the first thing we will do, we will get the list of presentation images. So get the list of present presentation images. So let's call it path images equals um, OS dot list directory and we will give in the folder path. So what is the folder path? Let's just declare it here. Folder path equals present presentation. So this is the name of the folder. So here we will write folder paths. Folder path and yeah, that's pretty much it. So actually is it? Yeah, so for, for the list, yeah, that is pretty much it. So let's run that. Oh, actually we didn't print anything. So let's print the print the path images to see if we are getting it right. Let's run that. There you go. So now you can see we have all the names. Now, there is a very specific problem that you can encounter. And let me explain how, how that works. So if you have more than nine presentations, so if you have 10 files, then uh, the sorting will be wrong. So if I write here 10, so let's say after five, it should give you 10, right? But in this case, it will give you 10 after one. So let's just run that again. So there you go. So now you can see it is one, then it's 10, then two, then three, then four and five, which does not make sense, right? So that if, if your 10th presentation is thank you, it will just appear right after the first one. Uh, sorry, the slide. So what exactly can we do to sort this out? So what you can do is you can write here sorted, sorted, and then you can sort based on the length. So of course it will sort based on the, what do you call numbers, but it will also sort based on the length. So key is length. So this time around, 10 will now be at the end. There you go. So it's one, two, three, four, five, and then 10. So I will keep it here like this in case you have more than 10 files. So, but I will remove the 10th one. Uh, okay. Okay, so now that this is clear, now we need to import. So these are just names. We didn't really import any image. So what we need to do is we need to import so here, first of all, we will create the path name. So here we will write, um, let's call it path full image equals os.path.join. Now you could literally create a string and join them, but if you use this function, it will work in different platforms. So it will be easier to work with. So here you can write a folder folder path you want to join this it will say presentation slash the name of the image so what is the name of the image we will get it from here from path images so we will get the first one so here we will write path images number zero so number zero will give us this one one dot png so it will import the first one but in this case, um, what we will do is we will make it a variable. So let's just write here variables. And here, oh, is the spelling wrong? 
show context very oh there's no a my bad uh, okay so then uh, what were we doing okay yeah we will write the image number so here we will say that image number number equals zero so why do why are we doing this because this value now if we change it we can uh, go back and forth in our slide so that's how simple it is if i want to go to the next slide i will change the image number to two and it will automatically change it to uh let's say the second slide uh, we will test it now so here once we have that we will write image current equals or should we write slide let's just write image current so we will write cv2 dot im read and we want to read the path of the full image so that's how simple it is and we need to display it so here we will copy this and we will write here slides uh, slides or presentation whatever you want to call it and image current so yeah so let's run that and see how it works so now we should have two uh, images there you go so this is our presentation it says exploring AI um, and yeah it works so this is the first image now if we wanted to we can change the number here let's say image number four Okay, so this will be the last one uh, because we are using zero as well. So it will be the fifth one, which says thank you. There you go. So you can see how it, easy it is for us to change the slide number. We just change the number here and it will change the slide. But how do we tell it? We will tell it based on some gestures. Now, uh, before we go there, what we will do is we will add uh, this, uh, what do you call display uh, or you can say the webcam image on our slide as well because when you want to present you don't want two different Im uh, images uh, you just want to see what is happening a little bit on the side uh, just to make sure you are in the correct position and everything uh, but you don't want two different images so what we can do is we can make this image smaller and then we can put it on a corner so it's very simple uh, how we can do this is first of all we have to define the size of it so we can say the height of the small image and the width of the small image equals uh, 120 and 213 so these are numbers based on the actual size you just divide it by uh, I think 8 or 6 something like that and you will get this so and then if, if you want to make it bigger or smaller, what you can do is you can multiply it by, let's say 1.5 or something like that. I will keep it multiplied by one. And if you multiply it by points, one point something, 1.2, then you have to convert it into integer. So here I will write integer multiplied by 1.2, let's say. So uh, you, you can increase the size of this. That's why I'm keeping this here. Otherwise it's not really required. So if you want it a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller, you can change it from here. So now that we decided on the width and the height of this image, what we need to do is we need to place it on our actual image. So first of all, we are going to resize it. So here we are going to, uh, let's just write here, adding, adding, okay, the caps lock is on, adding, um, let's say webcam image on the slides so first thing we will do we will create an image small then we are going to resize it cv2 dot resize and we will resize it based on the width and height we decided so ws and um, hs width height uh, width small and height small so it will resize it this way and now we need to place it on our uh, slides so uh, for the slides we don't really know the width and height of those so what we can do is we can get the height and the width and the channel equals uh, image current dot shape and that will give us the uh, width and height of the slides so now all we have to do is we have to place it on our image so we will say that the image current 
so it is a matrix so what we need to do is we need to define the starting and the ending point of the matrix so the starting point what we are doing is we are putting it in the top right corner so the starting points of the of the height will be zero so we want to start from zero and the height the ending point of the height will be the height of the small image right and the width will be a little bit tricky for the width the starting width will be the total width minus the width of the small image and the ending point will be the total width so that will give us the top right corner if you want to change you can put it at the bottom uh, right or the top left or the bottom left whatever you want and so this is a matrix now we want to change this matrix to image small so we want to overlay that this is what we are writing here it's very simple so if we run this now it will give us the image on the side always so there you go so you can see me now on the right hand corner so if we wanted to we could simply neglect this image we don't have to uh, display this at all but for now uh, because we want it to display a little bit bigger it's it's good to have that too so that is good and now we can move on to the hand tracking part so now we are going to add the hand detector module so what we will do is we will write here from cv zone dot hand tracking module import hand detector and we are going to use this hand detector to find the hand and based on that uh, we are going to um, apply some gestures so here we will add our hand detector so we will write here hand detector and uh, we will simply write detector equals hand detector and the detection confidence detection confidence we want as 0 0.8 which means that if you're 80 percent sure that it's a hand then consider it a hand and then the maximum number of hands we should have uh, are one so we don't want multiple hands once this is done, it's very simple to detect the hand. All we have to do uh, is we have to go down here and let's just make some space here. And we are going to say that uh, detector, detector dot find hands. And we want to find it on uh, based on this image. So once it finds the hands, it will put it in hands and then it will output the image back so it will draw on the image as well so that's good and once we get those hands we can uh, okay let's just run it first and see if everything is working so far and then we'll go on to the next step so there you go so I have my hand here and you can see it is the right hand being detected uh, but again you you can see the problem here is that if I move to the right it's moving to the left so we need to flip the image so it will be convenient when we are drawing, uh, so it will be easier. So here we can write uh, image equals cv2.flip and we want to flip our image in the horizontal direction. So one means horizontal, zero means vertical. So we don't want to flip it in the vertical. So now if I move it, um, you will be able to see. Uh, let me just go back. There you go. So here you can see this is our hand if i move to the right it's moving to the right if i move to the left it will move to the left uh, but the problem here is that it's saying left so it's not really a problem in this case because we are not going to use that functionality but what you can do here is you can write here flip type equals um, i believe false false so if we run that that should solve that issue of left and right so let's go back here and there you go so now it's a right image so everything is good okay so once we have this we need to find if there is a hand detected if we have hands if anything is present in the hands it's basically uh, what you call the list then we need to get the landmarks of this hand so uh, and we also need to get the number of fingers that are available that are up so what we will do is uh, first of all we will get the hand so 
so hand equals hands at zero again it is a list so it can have multiple hands it can have one two three four hands so what we will do is we will get the first one and we know it will be only one because the maximum number of hands equals one so that's why uh, we are putting zero because we just need the first one once we have that now in order to control uh, the gestures we need to know how many fingers are actually up so we have a very convenient function to check that uh, it's called fingers up so we can write detector dot fingers up and which hand do you want to check you have to give in the hand so it will check how many fingers are up and it will give us a list so here we will call it fingers and then we can print it out to see what it looks like are we printing anything else no so th that's the first one we can remove that as well so let's just comment this and yeah so we will go to fingers and let's just see what it looks like so that we know what we are applying um, later on so here on the side you will see on the um, on the console you will see that I have uh, the fingers up at this point so if we close you can see this is one two three four so right now uh, the the left and right are wrong uh, let's just check why is it wrong uh, because I believe it's the left and right problem so we might have to fix that are we going to use the thumb uh, not really so we are not really going to use the thumb so it might not be a problem let me just remove that let's try that here yeah so now now it's fine so the only thing the problematic part is this uh, number uh, it's this uh, value that says left the string but other than that now it's working fine so um, we have one, two, three, four, and five. So all of them are working fine. So that's good. So what we will do next is uh, we are going to, based on these, um, what do you call, number of fingers up, we are going to apply some gestures. So, but before we do that, what we want to make sure is that when we apply a gesture, it has to be close to your face, um, actually above your face. So that when you are presenting, when you're normally presenting, it should not have an effect. So if you don't do that, then anytime you are moving your hand, your fingers might become one or two or something like that. And then it might uh, trigger the problem. It might trigger the slide. So we don't want to do that. So normally in a presentation, you won't put your hand up above your face. Um, so that, that could be a good place to add a gesture. And it will not look that awkward. Uh, when you apply it only once so let's let's have a look at how it looks like so what we can do is uh, we can draw a line to check the threshold so let's just call it draw uh, draw line cv2.line and we want to draw it on our image and uh, we we have we have to define a threshold so let's say in the variables we define it as a gesture threshold equals let's say 300 so if the value is below 300 which means it's uh, uh, above my line then we will say that uh, detect the gestures so here we are going to write zero gesture threshold so this is the starting point so the width will be zero and the height will be the gesture threshold and then uh, the the point number two will be the width at the end of the image and then the gesture threshold again so you will see what it looks like it will be more clear once we see it and then we will give it a thickness of 10. Uh, we're giving it a big thickness so that uh, we can see it in the smaller image as well so there you go so this is the threshold so what i recommend uh, to do is that put your face put uh, align your camera so that your face is in the middle of this line so while you're presenting 
uh, that, that should be the placement of the camera. So then you can simply do this and you can do the gesture here. It doesn't look that awkward. But if it's like really below and you go up, it will be a little bit weird. So try to align it to the center of your face. So then here you can see it as well, the line. So that is good. So now that we know this position, we will check that if, if our, um, the center of our hand is above this uh, point, uh, above this line, then we are going to accept the gestures. So first of all, we need the center point of the hand. So we will write center X and center Y equals hand. And we will get, it's a dictionary, so we will write center and it will give us the center values. So now we can simply write if our CY is less than or equal to the gesture threshold, then we are going to check the gestures. So here we are basically writing if hand is at the height of the face. If hand is at the height of the face. So if that is the case, then uh, we are going to check the gesture. So this is gesture number one. Uh, let's say that this is left. And then we will do the right as well. So this gesture number one, what do we do? We will check if the fingers equal. So what we will do is we will use the thumb and the pinky finger to go left and right. So it's very simple to use that. So what we will write is, is one. So this will be thumb, zero, 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 zero. So if this is the case, then print left. So let's just try to understand what we have done so far. First of all, our hand must be above that line. And if we point, uh, if we uh, open up our thumb and close everything else, then it should go, uh, it should print out left. So in this case, okay, let's bring this in front. In this case, if I do this, it will not print anything. You can see there's nothing on the console. But if I go above and do this, then it says left, 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 right? So we can do that. And if we go down, nothing will happen. If we go up something, or let's say we will go to the left side. This is good. Now we know that left is working. And the same thing we will do with the right. Actually, let's copy the comment as well. So this is gesture one. And oh, what happened there? So this is gesture two. And we will write it as right. And this one will be zero. And now we will use the pinky finger. So it will be one. So here we will write right. So let's run that. So we are just testing the gesture at this point and later on we will assign something to it. So here if I do left, right, nothing happens. But if I go up and do left, it goes to the left. Right, it goes to the right. There you go. It's very simple and um, normally you would not do this in a slide or uh, in a presentation. So <laughs> uh, this will be weird if you are doing this in a presentation uh, without any context. So this is a good place to start. So it is like a semicolon, like you normally don't use. That's why you have that in programming languages that it's the end of line. Anyways, so then what we will do, now we need to assign uh, when this is pressed. So what we will do, we will write here that uh, the image number minus equals one. So if we want to go to the left, just reduce the image number. And if we want to go to the right, just increase the image number. That's how simple it is, right? So let's run that and see if it works. Okay, so let's go to the right and we have an error. Uh, it was left by the way, but again, it's an error. What's the error? The error is that the list index is out of range. So we were already at zero, we were at zero, and then we told it to go negative one. 
so it became minus one so now there is no image at negative one there is no list at um, there's no value so what we need to do is we need to make sure that if the image number is greater than zero then we do this otherwise if it's not then we will not change the number okay so if it's greater than zero then we will do this so in in this case if i put the left again it will not give me an error but there is no left slide so it will not go any further on the other direction but if i do right you saw it actually went uh, a little bit further it went till the end of the slide it went till number five and then it gave an error again it gave an error because it went to slide number five and then uh, it added one more it became five or six and then that number was not present in the list so it gave an error so we, what we need to do is we will give a limit here as well that if the image number is less than the length of our path images so this is the path images where we loaded all the numbers so if we go at the top uh, yeah so these are the five that we have so this w value will be five so but we will write minus one so if it is four then we can add one more right so that's the maximum you can go so you can go more than that so let's try it so uh yeah so if i go to the left nothing happens if i go to the right it goes till the end but it doesn't give you an error and if i go to the left it quickly goes to the left and right so this is a problem so it is happening so fast that there is um it, it's clicking multiple times so it is triggering all the slides at once so we need to fix that how can we fix that it's very simple we need to introduce a variable called button pressed and whenever it presses the button we are going to wait till we can press the other one again so here we will call it button pressed equals false and to to do all of this to do all of this the button pressed should be false so if there is a hand available and the button pressed is false then it will do this right so whenever there is a gesture applied we will write here that the button press becomes true so whether it's this gesture or this gesture whatever it is we will say the button press becomes true so it will not go here but then it will never go back here unless we make it false again so when do we make it false we go down here and outside the loop outside the if statement outside this if statement we are going to write here so let's say button pressed uh, iterations so here we are going to write uh, a little bit of iteration so we will write if we'll write here if button pressed if that is true then counter plus equals one so we will uh, or let's call it button counter button counter button counter plus equals one so we will go back here and here we will write button counter equals zero so here button counter plus one and then we are going to say if uh, the button counter button counter is greater than is greater than the delay so now what is the delay or let's call it button delay button delay so button delay will be a value for example it will be number of frames so five frames or ten frames it should not do anything it should not accept another button press so button delay uh, we will call it let's say 10 so 10 frames it should not do anything else so if it's greater than 10 then we will put the button counter as zero and we will put the button 
uh, pressed equals false. So now it will accept another button press. Spellings are wrong here. There you go. So yeah, so that is the idea. So we have now, whenever the button is pressed, then it will accept. Actually, we can put it here inside because if it's outside, it's not really adding or reducing a number. So yeah, we can put it here. So let's put it here when it's actually making a change. Oh, there you go. So let's run that and see if it works. So now I will do uh, right. Oh, it is still a bit fast. So let's change it to what is it right now? 10. Actually, it's uh, going really fast. Maybe it's going more than 40 frames per second. 40, 50, because the camera I'm using, the webcam can go up to 60. So maybe it's really fast. So let's put 30, 30 frames. Let's see. So 30, if you're running at 30 FPS, it should be one second. So let's do this. There you go. Now it's uh, more reasonable. If I do that again, it goes forward. Again, goes forward, backwards, backwards, backwards. So now it's more responsive and it is something that is more usable, so it is easy to work with. There you go. So now the back and uh, fourth gesture is done. So we have done two of them. Now the third one will be to actually draw. So the drawing part is actually a little bit trickier than this. It's not as simple as the other gestures, but it is quite simple. It's not that hard. So let's go ahead and start with the drawing. So the first step here will be to actually add our pointer. So let's write here that this is gesture three, show pointer. And what we'll do is whenever we have two fingers up, the index and the middle finger up, it will show us the pointer. So we will not draw it, but it will be a pointer. We want to draw it with a single finger because it will be easier. Otherwise, you can flip the idea as well if you wanted to. So here we will write if fingers. Let's copy that because we are lazy. If fingers, uh, if both of them are up, if index and the middle finger are up, then we are going to draw a pointer. So the pointer will be CV2 dot circle and we will draw it on our image current, not on the image. And uh, because image current is the slide. So we want to draw on the slide. Then we have to draw uh, our uh, point where the index finger is. So where is the index finger? <coughs> uh, we didn't actually get it. So um, let's, let's get it here. So our index finger equals, um, it will come from the LM list. So let's find the LM list first. So LM list, basically it means landmark list, is basically the hand and we will get the dictionary, the value of LM list. So from this LM list, we want to get the point number eight. So the point number eight is basically the index finger and we want to get, uh, yeah, we want to get the value number zero and we want to get the value number one. So these are the two values that we need. So that will be our index. It will have the third value as well for uh, the Z, but we don't want that. So this is the index finger. So here we are going to write that we want to draw the circle on the index finger point and we will give it a big value, let's say 12 for the radius and we will give it a color of red, so 0, 0, 2, 5, 5. And then we will write cv2.filled. We want it filled. So that should be good. So let's go ahead and see if that works. Um, so here, if we put... Okay. 
What is happening? Okay, here if we do put two fingers, nothing happens. So this is a problem because we don't want to uh, have the limitation of uh, what do you call this line to actually draw the circle. Wait, why is it not drawing at all? Uh, if fingers one one circle image current index finger all of that yeah it should draw so right now it's drawing only when it's above this so it should draw here yeah there you go so you can see the pointer now but this is bad because we don't want it to be only when it's above this line so we will take it out of this uh, loop so here we will go back one step. So the gesture number three is outside this if statement. So let's run that. This time around, now you can see wherever we go, it actually draws it. But here we have an issue. <clears throat> the issue is that if I go to the left, I will have to go all the way to the left to reach that left point. And this is not very... Uh, easy to do, so especially in a presentation. Uh, you don't want to go like this. It's just, <laughs> it's just weird. So what we want to do is, uh, we we want to keep it in this area. If I'm using my right hand, it should be in this area. If I'm using my left, it should be in this area. So what we will do is we will limit the values. So we will start from here, from the mid of the image, and we will say till the end of the image. So we will use the values of this to scale up to the whole image. So if I'm in the center, if I'm here in the center, so at this point, the pointer should be here at the end, right? So this will make it easier to go, for us to go left and right. And then we will do the same for the up and down because up is easy to go and it will be fine. But if you go down, you see the detection is bad. The detection is shaky. So we don't want to go till the end. So we will have, let's say, this region in which we will go left and right and up and down. So we will constrain that region. So to do that, uh, what we will do is we will constrain uh, our value once we get it over here. So this is the index finger. So we are going to constrain it here. So let's write here, constrain uh, values for easier, let's say, drawing. Okay, so what we will do is once we have this uh, index finger value, or should we? Okay, let's let's do one thing. We will write here x value. X value equals. So, what are we going to do? We are going to use NumPy. So NumPy has a function that basically allows you to go from one range to another range. So it converts that. Otherwise, you can use uh, basic mathematics to do that as well. But here we will use um, NumPy. So import NumPy as NP. And then we will go down and we will write that NP.interp. So which value do we want to change? Uh, we want to change this value. So LM. 8, 0. So this is the x value. We want to change this value. So the range of this value uh, should be from width, width of the image divided by 2. So this will be the halfway. So starting from there till the end of the image. So change this value to 0 to the total width. So we will do the same thing to our y. So for the y, um, as I mentioned, we just we don't need to do half. Uh, we can remove a few pixels from the top. Let's say we remove 150 pixels from the top. And um, then we remove 150 pixels from the height, from the bottom. So that's it. And then 0 to height. So this will be the value of our x and y. So let's put this as y. And yeah, so the output of this function is not integer. So we need to convert it into integer so that it doesn't give us an error. 
There you go. So if you didn't get this, basically what we are doing, we are converting one range to another range. And which value are we converting? We are converting this value. So that's pretty much it. We can remove this or do we need it? Uh, yeah, instead of writing that, then we can write index index finger equals uh, x val and then y val. The a here is small. Okay, so now it will automatically uh, convert everything um, over here and then it will be easier for us to move around. So have a look at this. Uh, I will try to put it here on the side. There you go. Okay, so I'm on the right side now and I have two fingers up. So if I go till the middle, you can see it goes to the end. So that's perfect. If I go to the right, at the end, it goes to the right. So kind of, right? So you can, you can remove some width from here as well if you want more room. And then the height, if I go up, you can see I'm not at the end, but it's uh, the pointer is at the end. So that's good. And if I go down, you can see the pointer is not at the end, but it is almost at the end uh, on the image. So now I have this playing area where I can move this pointer. So this way it will be easier. We don't have to go all the way there, uh, which is quite awkward position. So here we can move around and we can display. So the next step is to actually draw. So right now we are showing the pointer. The next step will be to draw. So here this will be just a number four. Uh, draw. So the drawing one will be when we have only the index finger. So when we have the index finger, we are going to draw. So this is basically the idea. And then you will see that if we run it now, nothing will change actually because it will be exactly the same. So if I have one finger or two fingers, uh, nothing is changing. It's just uh, drawing a circle and that's it. So wh what difference does it make when we want to draw? So for drawing, what we will do is we will create a list. And this list we are going to call annotations. Annotations. So this will be an empty list. And whenever we uh, have a new point, whenever we raise only the index finger, whenever we want to draw, we will append this annotations file, uh, sorry, annotations list. So here, what we will do is we will say annotations.append and we want to append the index finger. And down here, we are going to draw all the annotations. So here we can simply say for annotation in annotations, we are going to draw a line so we are going to write cv2.line and we will draw it on our image current and then we will draw it, um, we will write annotation. Uh, actually, we will need the iteration number. So we will write here i and we will write here enumerate. Enumerate, there you go. And we will say annotations at zero or at i and then annotations i minus one. So this will be minus one and annotations at uh, i one. Oh, not one, just i. So I, I think we don't need to enumerate. What we can do is we can just write length, length and we can write i uh, for i in range. Yeah. So i in range of length, we can write it like this. So this is fine. Uh, basically what we are doing is we are saying that uh, take all the points and draw lines between these points. So here we will say that the color of the line should be 0, 0 and 200, 200 and then the, the size is 12, the thickness. But the issue here is that right now if I run it, it will give an error because uh, the the first value will be zero. So zero minus one will give us minus one. So there is no point uh, 
uh, minus 1. So we have to write if we will draw the lines only if i is not equals to 0. i is not equal to 0. So if that is the case, then we are going to draw. So let's run that. So here, if we have one finger, you can see it's started to draw. If you put two fingers, it doesn't draw. But now you are going to see a big problem. If I put my finger down, you can see it creates a line between the previous annotation and this annotation. So let's say I was drawing, uh, I was pinpointing something. Let's say uh, I will go to the next one. And here I have these four of them. So what I'm doing is I'm pinpointing the basics. So I will draw the basics. I will say these are my basics. And then I'm talking about deep learning. So I will draw on the deep learning. But you can see now there is a line between that. And that's not good. It doesn't look uh, normal. And if I drew another one, it will start again from that point. So it, it doesn't recognize the difference between different annotations. So this is a problem. So how can we fix this? We can fix this by creating a list within a list. So in this annotations, we are going to create another list of annotations. So each one of these will be like that. So it will have multiple points. So let's say 5 and 10, and then it will have uh, 20 and 30. So this here is one annotation. This here will be a different annotation. This here will be a different annotation. So each one will be different and it will treat it as different. So uh, let's write it down. Again, it will be empty, but here we will write it a list within a list. So that's our annotations. But then we will have to make some changes. Um, first of all, we need to define an annotation number. So whenever we annotate, we will give it an annotation number. And once the annotation is complete, we will go to the next one so that we can update, we can add another one. So the first annotation will be zero, then the second one will be one, then two and so on. So here we will write annotation number equals, we will start from minus one. So the first one will become zero when we add it. I will, I will explain later on. Okay, this is annotation number. And then we need to give a flag called annotation start. So in the beginning, we will keep it as false. So whenever we start, we need to know the starting and the ending point of the annotation so that we can separate uh, these lists inside this list. So, so in the annotation start, initially it will be false. And whenever we put on one finger, it will become true. So whenever we have the index, whenever we have the draw pointer, it will become true. So here we will write if annotation start is, is false, then annotation start, come on, start, why is it not writing, start, is true okay so now whenever it is false uh, for the first time it will make it true and once it makes it true then we are going to start our process the first thing we will do we will uh, increase the annotation number plus equals one so it was minus one it will become zero when it was when it will be one it will become two when it's three it will become four so this is uh, the idea. So it will become plus one. And then what we will do is we will append an empty list. So here we are going to write annotations dot append and we will append an empty list. So in this list, we are going to keep adding the points. So that's how it will work. If we don't add this list, it will give us an error because we are directly going to tell it to put it in uh, list number zero. So what do I mean by that? 
So here in annotations, we were simply saying append index finger. But this time, we cannot say that. We will say in annotations, there is a list. That list is basically annotation number. In that annotation number list, append index finger. So right now, we are directly uh, calling that list. If we don't write this, there will be no list to call and it will give us an error. So we need to add this uh, empty list. So here, uh, until it is true, it will keep adding to this. Once it becomes false, then it will become true again and it will add to this list. So next time it will not add to this list, it will add to another list that it has created. So putting it true is correct now, but putting it false, we didn't do that. So when it starts the annotation, we know, but when do we end the annotation? It should end the annotation if the finger is not this, right? If there is any other finger, it should be false, right? So here we can write else annotation start equals false. So whatever the other one is, it will make it false. So let's try that. And now, um, now we have multiple lists, but in the drawing, we are simply drawing the same thing again. So we cannot do that. So what we will do is we will change the code here a little bit. So in annotations, we have our annotations. That's good. Then we have to put another loop for J in range, um, uh, the length of our, um, the length of our annotation at i. So it, it basically will loop through all the points and then we will check if j is not equal to zero. If j is not equal to zero, then it will draw this. But this time around, it will not draw from um, annotations. Uh, Actually, we do need that because it's not from annotations um, or we can write here annotations i and we can write here annotations i and then this will be j minus 1 and this will be j. There you go. So yeah, now it should uh, work as expected. Let's go ahead and try it out. There you go. So here we have two fingers and then we put one and we create a circle. We close and then we go to the other one and we create another circle. There you go. Perfect. So now we can have different ones and if we go back we start drawing and we can close and we can start drawing. There you go. Now it is perfect. So this is good. Now one more thing that we can do uh wait did we test let's test it with the with the other gestures maybe it will give us an error or something so let's say if we draw there you go and draw like this and then uh we go to the next slide and there you go that's a problem <laughs> we go back uh, and we can we can still draw we can still draw and it works but uh, when we go to the next slide, it should remove all the drawings so that we can draw on the next one. So whenever, whenever um, we are going left or right, we need to reset all the drawings. So how can we reset? Uh, we can reset by using these three lines of code. Annotations are zero, annotation number is minus one, Annotation start is false. So we can use these three lines. So here we can paste it like this. There you go. So if we run that, uh, let's see if it works. There you go. Single, double, then we go forward. It's gone. We go backwards. It's gone. So now we can go forward and backwards and then we can draw and we can draw multiple 
uh, what do you call uh, points and then we can go forward and backwards and it's all good so that's good now one last thing we can add is um, the the erasing so sometimes we want to erase and we did a mistake so we should have the option of erasing so here this is gesture number four so let's add a gesture number five that will allow us to erase so let's write here gesture 5 erase so let's say that if fingers are 3 or 4 let's put 3 it will be more unique you can add your gesture whatever you want here let's just put 3 if there are 3 of them then we will um, then we will remove so first of all, we need to check uh, if the annotations are present. So if there are any annotations, if it's not empty, then we are going to remove the annotations. Annotations dot pop minus one. So it will remove the last one that you drew. And we need to, if you remove the last one, then we need to change the annotation number uh, minus equals one. So whatever the number is, go back one, one more time. And uh, again, we need to add here that we have button pressed. Otherwise, it will do it so many times that it will be very difficult to work with. So yeah, so this is good. Let's run that. Okay, so let's try this out. So we are drawing, then we draw here, then we draw here. And oh, I made a mistake. I'll do this and it will erase, 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 erase. So as many as you want, you can erase. Oh, what happened there? It actually went all the way. Here the annotation number was the same. Uh, it didn't change the annotation number. Why is that? Hmm. So if we have the pointer here, show pointer, okay let's do one thing we can put here if it's show pointer annotation is false and then uh, if any of these annotation is also false just to make sure so let's try that again so here we create a circle we still have that issue. Why is that? Earlier it was working fine. So let's go forward, backwards. And we are drawing. We are drawing. So sometimes it's working, sometimes it's not. Not sure what the problem is. Let's go forward, forward, forward. And let's draw again. So it happens at a very specific point. Not sure what that point is though. Seems fine to me now. Um, where else can we add this? Annotation start is false. If this is pressed. Or maybe when the hand is lost. Oh yeah, that could be a possibility. So if, if both of them are false, um, yeah, we can put an else here as well. Uh, this is gesture five. So here we can write else. Annotation start is false. Let's try that. Hopefully this will solve the problem. Uh, let's try to draw and then draw, draw, Draw. That worked fine. Let's try to draw again. So there you go. Then we draw here. Still, there is a problem. Is it when it's really fast or what happens? Where else can we add this? If button is pressed.
So annotation start is false with this. Mm. Oh, maybe that's the problem. So we need to put this over here. Yeah, maybe that's the problem. Annotation start should not be in another if statement. It should be directly that if this happens, then do it. Maybe that was the problem. Mm. Okay, let's try it out. So circle, 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 circle. Seems fine right now. Didn't happen. Let's try it another time. Oh, it happened again. To be honest, I'm not sure why this is happening. So it's going from here till here. It means that the index number is not updating properly. The annotation number. So if the number is greater than zero, image number is this, annotation number is minus one. Hmm. Annotation start is true. Okay, let's try to let's let's try to print the annotation number. Let's see if we can find something there. So it is minus one right now. We drew and it became zero. Now we draw again, it becomes one. Draw again, becomes one. Uh, we delete, 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 delete. Ah, this is the problem becomes minus two. Why did it become minus two? So annotation number. So whenever we are popping, there is something in annotation. Um, if annotations, uh, if annotation number is greater than minus one then only you can do this let's try that again so draw 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 delete 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 uh, you cannot delete more So it has another one, but it's not able to delete. So this is minus one. So now it becomes zero. So yeah, this is the issue. So the annotation number is not correct. Greater than or equals to zero should be the same thing. Let's try that out. So this is the first one, second one, third one, delete, delete, delete. So yeah, we are not able to delete the last one. So why is that? Okay, let's try to put this as zero. And then we will put this as zero as well, and this as zero as well. 
there any place else? No. So let's try that. So this is one, two, three, one, two, three, four. Yeah, now it seems fine. One, two, three. There you go. So hopefully this is the problem. So now I can see the problem is solved. So hopefully this will not uh, create any more problems. So let's see this. There you go. We are able to do them separately. Uh, one, two, three, and four. Yeah. We are able to rub off all of them. And we are able to create without any lines in between. So this was the issue. So this is it for today's video. I hope you have learned something new. This is a very good project if you want to actually present and it can be used in real life. So you can take this and present with your own presentation. All you have to do is change the files over here. And if you wanted to change the numbers here, you can do that too. And uh, based on the actual size of the presentation, it will load up the slides and then uh, you can present it in um, more appropriate and uh, what do you call uh, a futuristic way so hopefully this will help you in your presentations and it will also help you in a little bit of uh, understanding coding as well so this is it for today's video i hope you have learned something new if you like the video give it a thumbs up if you loved it share it with your friends and i will see you in the next one